Hello, this is Dr. J here to proudly announce that my Commander X16 graphics library, Exist16, is now available to the public. I've done some cleanup, a couple of bug fixes, and documented the heck out of it. I've tried to make it as user-friendly as possible so it can be useful to many people. There have been a couple of small changes from what I've demoed in earlier videos up to now, but nothing too drastic. It still pretty much works the same as what I've shown before. One difference is I've improved the pseudo-random number generator again. I replaced one of the two tables with a linear feedback shift register, which cuts down on the amount of hard-coded data by 256 bytes. And that's not nothing when our space is so limited. Not only that, but the linear feedback shift register seems to produce better random numbers. The only problem is it only has a period of 256, which isn't long enough, so I kept one of the tables and I exclusive or the output of the LFSR with the value at the current table index. There's the one table that's still, still there. And then I increment the index for every 256 runs of the LFSR, extending the period to an impressive 65,536. This latest version of the pseudo random number generator is half the size of the previous one, has a period four times as long, and seems even more random, with nothing I could identify that even hinted at repeating patterns, so it's pretty much better in every way. The other significant change I can think of is I added a new function, copy HiRAM to VRAM using metadata, which is a convenience function for copying graphical data from HiRAM to VRAM just using the information in the graphics metadata file so you don't have to manually enter the dimensions and offsets again in code. There's no reason that you should have to do that when the information already exists in the metadata file, which was the whole reason for having it in the first place. This function is particularly useful when the graphical data you're copying is for tiles rather than sprites, so you don't want to use the prepare sprite function. Okay, with those explanations done, let me give a quick tutorial on downloading the library and using it in your projects. Note that to use the library, you will need the CC65 compiler suite on your system and the bin folder on your path environment variable. And I would also recommend having make installed, all of which is detailed in my second devlog video about setting up your environment. I'll include a link to that video in the description in case you haven't already seen it. Now, once you have those prerequisites installed, we're ready to get started. So, just go to drjstudio.com for Dr. J Studio. That's my website. Front page will look something like this. Just go to the Commander X16 or CX16 tab. Now, on here, before we look at the Exist16 library itself, there's a couple other things of interest too. I have a link to pre, the pre-compiled Zsound library, uh, just in case you have any issues with compiling it yourself then you can just get this pre-compiled version to use it in your projects. Uh, you'll still need to download the Zsound library off of GitHub to get the headers and stuff. But this way, if you can't compile it, that's fine. Just grab the pre-compiled library from here. And you can also get my image converter that converts PNG files into the raw palette indexed files, which are used by the Exist16 library. You can get a Windows and a Linux version here. The Windows version is standalone. But bigger. The Linux version does require you to have JDK 7 JDK Java Development Kit 17 or higher on your system in order to work. And finally, a simple Python utility for converting strings into comma-separated lists of ASCII codes, which is helpful if you hard code any strings in your program for use with Exist 16's text draw functions. All that stuff is available uh, here on my website and links to the various useful resources. But the main attraction, of course, is the library itself. So you just click the giant Exist16 logo, and it will take you to the GitHub repository where, uh, where the library is currently hosted. So you've got the source files in the root directory, along with a simple readme and a doxy file for generating doxygen documentation. The lib folder is where the exist library file will end up after you compile the library. There's also a pre-compiled lib in here, which you can use if you're okay with all of the default values for the macros and stuff in the header files. 
But if you make any customizations to those, you will have to compile the library over again. The ink folder has all the headers, which is what you're going to have to include along with the library file to use the Exist16 library in your projects. There's an examples folder, which has uh, slightly modified versions of three of the examples that I've been showing in my devlog videos, just showing how to set these up with the latest version of the library. One that uh, has the animated ship sprite and 32 animated star sprites to show how to use those the tile map example, and then the example displaying text on screen in various ways. And then finally, in Docs, we've got the license. I decided to go with an MIT license, which basically means you can do whatever you want with this library as long as you attribute me and don't hold me liable if you somehow manage to blow yourself up with the library. And then in the Doxygen folder, uh, we have uh, Pretty thorough documentation of the header files. Just go to index.html. Okay, right, you'd have to actually download it on your own system. You can't view it through GitHub, but just go to the index.html and you'll get some nice Doxygen documentation for the header files. The real star of the documentation though is the Exist16 manual PDF, which contains very thorough tutorial-like documentation on how to use the library. But anyway, let's go ahead and just download a copy of the library for ourselves. I'll just download the zip file. Keep things very simple. There we go. Go into the folder where you downloaded the zip file and go ahead and just unzip it. All right, and then just go into the exist16 main folder, which obviously is going to have the exact same contents as we were just looking at on GitHub here. And now, so I will bring this up in a terminal window. And as long as you have downloaded the CC65 compiler suite and have its uh, bin folder in your path environment variable, and as long as you have make, then you can just run make, and it will automatically compile the library for you, put the exist.lib in the lib folder, and this make file should be very cross-platform. It definitely works on Windows. I haven't yet tested it on Linux, but I have no reason at all to think it wouldn't work on Linux. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about Mac, so it might or might not work there. <laughs> not really sure. Um, I assume so, but haven't actually verified that. Let's go ahead and bring up the manual. All right, so we will go through the preliminaries. You can read those on your own time. All right, we can start with the installation instructions. Like it says, download the library to your local system. And actually, we don't need to look at this. I pretty much already explained it. Let's go to the quick start guide. All right, so I'll go ahead and just go through the quick start guide. And that will pretty much complete the tutorial on how to use this library with your own projects. So. First thing to do is bring up existtiles.h and existmem.h. So we'll go back into the root directory, into the ink folder, and we'll bring up each of those header files. There's the tiles header and the memory header. So there's a few macros in here that you might want to customize for your own games. Uh, and the Doxygen documentation I added takes up a bit of space. So feel free to be liberal with co code folding uh, to make it a little easier to read. All right. So the layer zero macros here are going to be the ones that you're likely to care about in the tiles header file. This one, layer zero map base width, is going to define what you want the maximum width of your tile maps to be. And then height is the same thing except for height. Um, the default is 64 by 64, which is a pretty decent size if you go with the default 16 pixel tiles. It's enough to give you like three screens or so of resolution horizontally and a little bit more than that vertically. Uh, so you can make pretty decently sized levels that way, but if you want even bigger ones, 
you could bump this up to say like 128 in either dimension or even both dimensions and then you could make really big levels but it will also take up quite a bit more space in your vram so that's the trade-off is the bigger levels that you support by setting your layer zero map base width the less memory you're going to have to work with in vram for other things like sprites and stuff the total size of the map base has to be equal to the width multiplied by the height and the only reason this is another macro definition instead of being automatically computed is because it's used to size the map tiles array down here uh, and then you set the dimensions of your tiles in pixels and there's only two valid values 8 and 16 because those are the only values that the commander x16 supports uh, and then the other other variable of interest in here good lord i should have looked up the hotkey for code folding everything in notepad plus plus before i started recording this video uh let's see okay so it's going to be these ones exist tile map width picks and exist tile map height picks the point of these is that the layer zero map base width and height are the maximum size of your maps in tiles but you don't necessarily want every level in your game to be equal to the maximum possible size so if you want to have smaller levels then when you load the levels with smaller dimensions you set the values of tile map width picks and tile map height picks which are going to be equal to the width and height of that level in pixels not tiles but pixels and these are going to constrain the area that the camera is capable of scrolling to when you use the scroll camera function right here. So those are the values that you care about um, in the tiles header. If you're okay with these defaults for these macros, then you don't need to change anything here. And But if you do change anything, you're going to have to recompile the library for the changes to take effect. And then in the memory header, the one thing you might want to customize in here is these memory addresses. Now, if you are using Exist16's built-in text display functionality, then you're not going to want to change any of these first three addresses. You'll want to leave them as they are. The addresses that you might want to change are the layer zero tile base, and you would want to change that if you allocate either more or less space to the size of your levels. So in other words, if you support bigger maps than 64 by 64, you're going to have to also allocate a larger amount of space to your layer zero map base, which would push back the memory address where your tile base starts. Uh, whereas if you make your maps smaller, then you could push this memory address forward and therefore have more memory from that point forward. And then likewise, the number of tiles, the maximum number of tile graphics that you want to support is going to determine how much space you have to allocate to your layer zero tile base. And if you allocate more than the default, you're going to have to push back the address where your sprite image data starts. And if you allocate less than the default amount of space for your tile base, then you can push this address forward. And there is one other... Uh, define that I actually forgot to mention which is also important in the tiles header it's this one the map maximum map tile graphics this is basically the maximum number of tile graphics that you want to be able to support at a single time so with the default value of 64 that means for every level in your game each level can have as many as 64 distinct tile graphics now, obviously, you can bump this value up to something higher than this, and that's fine. But if you do, then you're going to have to allocate more space to your tile base. You'll have to allocate um, however many bytes you have in each of your tile graphics, which is going to be dependent on their dimensions. So however many bytes each tile graphic is multiplied by the total number of tile graphics is going to be the amount of space you have to allocate in your tile base, which will either 
pull forward or push back the address where your sprite data can start. Okay, so those are the macros that you'll either want to customize, or if you're fine with the defaults, you don't have to customize them. But if you do, you have to recompile the library. So that's step one here in the setup and initialization. For step two, compile the library using the CC65 compiler suite. We were just looking at that right here. Just run make, it'll automatically make the library for you. And then you're gonna have to create the graphics for your application. Uh, and they're gonna have to be in the file format understood by the exist 16. Now, thankfully, because you have access to this nice utility that I made for converting the images, you can make your images in modern image formats, well, one modern image format, PNG, and then just use this utility to convert them into the IMG format that Exist16 uses. And so let's just go ahead and look at an example of that. If we go into the sprites example, and go in the build folder, the PNG file in here is not only not needed, it is completely ignored by the program. And in fact, the program doesn't even know what to do with it because it's in the wrong image format. However, I just put it in here as a reference. So just make your graphics, your tiles, and your sprite sheets. And in this case, it's a very simple little three by three sprite sheet, which has a four frame animation for the ship, a four frame twinkling star animation, and then a single dark blue uh, square for the tile background. And so you'll just create all of your graphics, convert them into the proper image format. Obviously in reality, you wouldn't create all of your graphics ahead of time. You'll likely create them iterative, iteratively as you, uh, as you develop your game. But uh, with that understanding that this is an iterative process, once you have your graphics and you have them in the necessary format, you create your graphics meta.dat file. This is another small change where before I was calling it sprite meta.dat, but that wasn't really a good name because you can also define the information for tile graphics in here. Um, but the format of it hasn't changed from the videos that I showed earlier. So you can just launch your hex editor of choice. There we go. And then you're gonna to want to configure your hex editor to have 14 bytes per row because that's the size of each of these structs in memory. And I'm not going to cover again what each of these columns refers to. I covered that in a previous video. And even if you didn't see the video, it's explained in great detail in this PDF document. I'll go ahead and scroll down to that just to demonstrate. Right here, this table shows exactly what has to go into each byte for each row of your graphics metadata. Basically, this is just defining where each of your graphics are in um, each of your graphics are in the image. So for example, let's look at it again. You're going to have to define things such as the fact that the start of the ship animation is in the up starts in the upper left, so its x and y offsets in this image are zero zero. The twinkling star animation starts here in the middle, and because each frame is sixteen by sixteen pixels, its x and y offsets are going to be sixteen over and sixteen down. And you also define things like the dimensions of each frame, how many frames of animation are in each of these. And, you know, just all the other metadata that the Exist16 library needs in order to accurately parse these images out of your image files. Again, for the full details, uh, you can either see the previous video in my devlog covering that or just check the reference here in this PDF. All right. So once you've created your graphics meta.dat, and by the way, the name is actually arbitrary. You can actually call it whatever you want because you... Uh, you can control the name of this file in code, but this is just kind of a convention. Once you've created that file, then you're going to call these functions in order to initialize the exists 16 library for use with your program. And so if we just bring up this example here, go into the main function, you can see that after our variable definitions and uh, setting some 
uh, random seed values, although obviously for demonstration purposes, these are hard coded. But in a real program, you would do something to set these to some kind of random value, um, like getting the frame counter the first time that the user hits a button, something like that. We then call exist initialize tiles to set up the tile layers, exist initialize text tiles in order to set up the font and get all of that loaded into memory for use with our text drawing routines. And then we load in our sprite data. Then you will load the graphical data from the SD card if your game is running on a real Commander X16 or from your computer's hard disk if you're using the emulator as we are in this example using the exist load graphic function. Uh, and I'm not going to cover the function signature and everything that goes in here. Just check the reference in the PDF and it explains exactly what all these parameters are. But just load all your graphics in. You'll have one, um, one call to this function per separate graphic file. And obviously in a real game, you might make this a little fancier by having another metadata definition file that you loop through and then uh, you know call this once per iteration. But uh, and the idea is that you have to call this once per graphic file that you're loading into your game. And then for your sprites, you prepare them for display and animation by calling the exist prepare sprite function. And you can see that we do that with our ship sprite here, and we do it down here with our animated uh, star sprites. And then for your map tiles, you copy whichever of those are necessary using the new copy HiRAM to VRAM using metadata function. So you can see that we do that here with that single deep blue tile that is kind of representing space. Just copy that straight into VRAM. All right, and then if your game uses animated tiles, you will populate the exist map tiles lookup table and set the desired value for your tile animation time trigger in order to determine how fast your tiles cycle through their animations. Now the sprite example doesn't do that, but if we go to example two tiles and bring up that source file, then you can see this is where we define the animations in our lookup table. And again, in a real game, you would probably have your own data file formats that you specify where uh, you determine what your tile animations are for each of the different tile sets that your game uses and have those in a file that you load in instead of hard coding them like this. But this is just demonstrating the concept and how you have to do it. All right, and then after you've set everything up, you enter your main game loop, which in the case of the tile example is very small. It's small in all the examples because, you know, they're just for demonstration purposes. They're not really real games. And then here's the main game loop in the sprite example. You sync your main game loop to 60 hertz by just calling the exist wait function once per iteration. You can see that both of our main game loops do that. Animate whichever sprites are currently active using the exist process sprites function. You can call that once per iteration of your main game loop, or if you have to reduce processor load because you have a very resource intensive game, then you can call the exist process sprites function less frequently than every single iteration of your main game loop. That will reduce the load on the processor at the cost of reducing the maximum animation speed of your sprites. You can see process sprites being called right here. And if any of your sprites have to move around the screen, as they surely will, then uh, however they have to move, you can just call exist update sprite position in order to move them around on the screen. And in this case, that functionality is actually being deferred to move stars, and then we call that on each of the stars to scroll them down the screen, and then we call it in process input in order to move our ship around in response to the player hitting the D-pad buttons. Uh, if you have scrolling background tile graphics, you can scroll them on demand by calling the exist scroll camera function. And we can see an example of that 
here in the tiles example. We defer that to the scroll map function. In here, where in response to the joypad buttons being hit, we set the camera change variables and then call scroll camera. And if you have animated tiles, call exist animate tiles once per iteration of your main game loop. Like so, we do that in the tile example. Again, a real game might very well be doing all of these things rather than the sprite one doing the sprite stuff and the tile one doing the tile stuff, but you can easily combine these into a into a single program. They're just separated for demonstration purposes. You can display text as necessary using the text display functions, uh, such as, if we go up to these examples, uh, exist draw text. And then finally, handle user input uh, using the functions for that, which are going to be things like exist get joypad, get joypad falling edges, and so on. And that pretty much explains all of the different functions that you have to use in the exist 16 library to get all of the basic game functionality working. So this is all the stuff you have to do to initialize it. And then once you enter your main game loop, this is all the stuff that you have to do in order to just process and run your game. So let's go ahead and just look at an example. We've already uh, seen this in action in previous devlog videos, but just in case you're somebody who didn't watch the previous videos, let me just show the sprite example in action real quick. So I'm gonna open up the make file. Since this make file is not specific to my system because it's part of the library, I don't know what the path is going to be to your Commander X16 emulator. So you're gonna to have to enter that yourself. In this particular case, I'm uh, going to, let's see. Uh, actually, off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly where that is. So just a moment as I break the video <laughs> to go put in the right path to this. Okay, so much for my dream of not having to do any post-processing editing on this video. So I've entered the correct path to the Commander X16 emulator on my system. One other point about the make file is the make files in the examples that come with the exist 16 library are pointing to the copy of the library in the lib file up here. However, in your own program, you're probably going to have an include folder and a library folder, uh, not several directories above your project, but actually in the root folder of your project. And in that case, obviously you would have to update their locations in your make file. So just a heads up on that. But having given those caveats, we should now be able to run make. All right, and that worked just fine. So if we go in the build folder, we see it has created ex1.prg. And then if we do make run, it should launch it in the emulator. And it does. All right, and so we can see our animated star sprites flying down the screen, our animated ship, and we can move it around with the D-pad and we've got our little frame counter in the lower right corner of the screen. So, I mean, is this a mind blowing example? No, but it does demonstrate a lot of the functionality of the library and how you would uh, use it in your own games. And honestly, this is already a, a decent basis for the start of a vertically scrolling spaceship shooter. So you certainly could build on this to turn it into a real game without too much difficulty. And that pretty much demonstrates the uh, basic procedure for starting to build games using the Exist 16 library and hopefully save a heck of a lot of time versus having to implement all of this functionality for animated sprites and animated tiles and all the rest of it yourself. So I, I sincerely hope that this helps jumpstart some people's Commander X16 game projects. Um, and if you build anything cool with it, then, you know, hit me up, send me a line. I'd love to see if people actually made some stuff with this library. I think that would be really cool. And for when you need more detailed explanations of how stuff works, uh, I put a lot of effort into this PDF file. So it explains things in quite a bit of detail. It should hopefully serve as a good reference. And if you kind of want more formal documentation, then that's what the Doxygen is for. So you can just go into the Docs folder, into Doxygen, bring up index.html,
and probably the files, the file list is probably going to be the most helpful thing. Just pick whichever header it is that you want more information about, like the tiles, and the macros, function, signatures, and variables are all pretty thoroughly documented here. So should, uh, should provide a nice reference if you have any technical questions. And obviously all the source code is right here. So uh, you're free to look at how everything is implemented, make any changes that you want. CMIT license, so you're not forbidden from doing anything as long as you give me attribution and don't hold me liable. <laughs> Those are the only restrictions. And I would certainly very much appreciate it if you do use this and make a game with it. Just include a, a heads up in your credits that you, you built it utilizing the Exist 16 library by Dr. J uh, for providing this for free to the Commander X16 community. I, I think that's a fair thing to ask in return. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, announcement of the release of the library and little tutorial are complete. Again, I hope this proves to be useful for some people. As far as my own development efforts, this is certainly not the end of my devlog. Now that I finally have this out in the wild, it's time for me to start using it to build my own games. And that is definitely what I'm going to be starting to do uh, in the immediate future. Now it might be a little longer of a delay before my next devlog video gets released than we've had in the devlog videos up until now. Uh, because A, I've been devoting almost all of my free time lately to getting the Exist 16 library done and ready to go, which means I've fallen behind on a few other things that I need to attend to before I can get back to Commander X16 development. So that's going to be one reason for a bit of delay. Another reason is, as anybody who's done any indie game development knows, the beginning of the process is generally the part that takes the longest. Uh, getting all of your scaffolding in place, getting everything set up to where you can really start demonstrating anything at all is usually the longest and biggest hurdle. So because of that reason, it might be a little while before I have anything that's even worth sharing. Um, and I don't have an exact ETA on that. It'll just kind of take however long it takes. But more devlog videos are coming, and I'm planning on making some pretty darn cool games with this. Uh, the first one that I have in mind, assuming that it works out, is going to be a dungeon crawler RPG. So I sincerely hope that you'll stick around for more devlog videos to come and hopefully have some interest in, in the games that I'm going to make for this, because I think they're going to be pretty sweet. All right, well anyway, thanks for watching. Now get out there and make some cool games. Have a good one, everybody, and I'll see you next time for some more retro game development goodness.